Good morning. Good morning. It is an honor to be in front of you this morning. I know that even though we're lighting the Advent candles, I cannot hold a candle to the work that Sandy does. So thank you so much for your patience as I gave the announcements earlier. This day we come together for the second Sunday of Advent. The second Sunday, which focuses on the theme of peace. And so this morning, I invite you to turn your attention, if you will, to the quiet meditation that's printed inside your bulletin. And as we prepare our hearts for peace, we recognize that it is a peace in the midst of turbulence. It is a peace in the midst of the holiday season. It's a peace that we find in the midst of the struggle and the strain of our lives and relationships with one another. And so let you find peace this day in the balance between living it in the real main street of life and in the harmony that we call communion and community here at our church. If Christ is to come more fully into our lives this Christmas, if God is to become really incarnate for us, then fire will have to be present in our prayers. A sense of fire in our prayers says that in our hearts, we want peace when we recognize that the world sometimes is working against us. It's hard to keep the peace when you're traveling down the highway and someone's like two inches from the back of your car. They roll down the window as they pass to remind you that you too are number one. <laughs> Yet we want peace. And so this day, that has to be the fire in our hearts. I had a friend who oftentimes would smile as someone did that and blow them a kiss. It would freak them out. But he meant it not as passive aggressive, but because he refused to allow their behavior to extinguish the peace of Christ within. That is the message of following Jesus. No matter what anyone does or says, you refuse to allow the peace of Christ to be extinguished in your heart. So this morning, I want us all to move into this Christmas experience, to allow the incarnate experience of God to set our hearts ablaze, to present it in prayers that are interior and exterior. Love each other and give each other peace. <laughs> Jesus. John the Baptist tells us that 
the road home is always under construction as mountains are leveled and valleys filled to make smooth for the path that leads us to our true destination where we can live in peace and unity with all. We light these candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace as a sign of our assurance that through the road of life is hard. We believe it is worth the journey towards our home in Christ, God's kingdom. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us join in singing Light of the Advent Table Hymn. It's in there. Eight we sing number 209, verses 1 and 2.
All right, now, this is like the adventure of all adventures. Does anybody want to come up for children's time? <laughs> if that's a no, I'm going to read the book and you do whatever. I'm going to get my own special. Hey, what's going on? Oh, man, look at that talk. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Come on over. You sit right there. You sit right there. So we're going to read this book today. We've been very serious. we got to, like, chill it out a little. Are you coming over on the other side? You sit there. Is there you go. All right. It's called The Gift of Giggles. Do you guys ever have the giggles? I get them all the time, too. Not in the best spots, but I get the giggles. All right. Hi. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Long ago and far away, there was a quiet little kingdom of grown-ups. It was a very nice kingdom Daddy. with no toys in the yard or fingerprints on the windows. Daddy. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> the grown-ups were busy. Every morning, they hurried off to work. They walked their dogs and they polished their cars. The kingdom was very nice, but something was missing. Look at that. They look all so grown up and serious, don't they? Their cakes and their cars and their rakes and their dog walking. The grown ups had parties, but they would just sit and talk. Oh, that's so boring. They played games, but they never jumped around. Can you believe that? Ah, oh, that doesn't sound. You want to jump around, right? Yeah. One day, the princess noticed that life was far too boring in the kingdom. Something had to be done. We need a baby in the kingdom. A baby? Yes, a baby. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. A baby will change everything. And when she spattered And so a baby was delivered, just like that. The minute she opened her bright eyes, the grown-ups all smiled. When she clapped her little hands, the smiles grew bigger. And when she spattered her baby cereal all over the royal kitchen, all of the grown-ups gasped. They were like, oh no. And then... Then something amazing happened. The grown-ups all began to laugh. At first it was a little, then it grew into a tee-hee, then a ha-ha, then a ho-ho-ho. Then the baby began to shriek with delight, and the grown-ups shrieked with her. Before you knew it, the whole kingdom was giggling. They giggled all day and they giggled all night and all through the next day. They giggled so much that their faces hurt and their tummies too. Finally, they were exhausted. They fell asleep in one big pile of giggles. When they awoke, they found that all the giggles had made them hungry. They ate and they ate until their plates were clean. Look, cried the princess, every plate is a happy plate. Goo, goo, ga, ga, agreed the baby. Splat went the last of the baby cereal. From that day on, there were giggles everywhere. In fact, there was a royal decree that everyone in the kingdom must giggle at every meal. <laughs> this is some serious business. Soon other babies were delivered to the kingdom. Well, that must have been a busy season for Amazon. Every day at dinner time, silly sounds spilled out in every home. They rolled down the walkway into the gardens. The kingdom was a happy place because one little baby brought the gift of laughter to everyone. The end of quiet and the beginning of wonderful things. 
So we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, which is this one baby, right? It transforms the world. And sometimes we have to be like very serious, but more importantly, sometimes we have to be happy and have fun and be silly, right? All right. So I figured today would be a good day to be happy and fun and silly. So I got you these great gifts. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> Almost there. Right? So now this is your job to go have fun with these. So do you want that? All right, I'll see you later. You're not giggling like church. There's laughter. Knock it off. All right. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going the wrong way. I'm going the wrong way. Hey, Tim. Yes, ma'am. Have some paddles. All right. Have fun in Kid Zone. I'll see you later, okay? Bye. <laughs> that made me pretty happy. You got it? All right. You got it. Okay. You can swap that.
to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us and give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you please be seated? <coughs> trying to make it the next few minutes without corrupting anybody. Let us pray. May the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It was the wisdom of Jim Croce that said this, you don't tug on Superman's cape. You don't. Fit in the wind. You don't pull the mask off the old Lone Ranger, and you don't mess around with Jim. And so this story, this wisdom that Jim Croce gives us is the centerpiece by which we find that there is wisdom that comes from Zechariah in the gospel today. As you'll recall, Zechariah questioned the birth of his son, John, who we know as John the Baptist. And as either punishment or reward, depending on how you look at it, he was unable to speak for the entire time his wife was pregnant. And it asks the question, would Zechariah challenge God again? Would Zechariah like it? Or would his wife Elizabeth like it even better? The point is, wisdom comes from how you see things. Wisdom comes from when it happens, who the speaker is, what's going on in the situation. I bring this up because since Wednesday, I have been absolutely focused on the gospel and focused on this conversation I had with a colleague while we had coffee at the college library. He was sitting there and he was talking about the wonderful Thanksgiving experience that he had. His father was there, his grandfather was there, and they had this wonderful conversation, and he was talking about the great wisdom that his dad had given him year after year, and he pondered it, and it was the beauty of that evening, or that afternoon, and that whole weekend. And as I listened, I wondered, What was the wisdom that my father had passed on to me? And as I paused, I could picture my childhood whizzing down I-95 at 75 miles an hour. My dad desperately swinging his right arm over the seat, trying to hit my brothers and I, saying, don't make me come back there. (laughs) There's two kinds of wisdom. There's wisdom in the moment, you kind of think, Like we're trying to fight off what's going on. And there's long-term, deep-seated wisdom that asks us questions that may transform our lives and our world. In the prophetic word of book of Malachi, we hear Malachi talk to us today as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. His words seem rather rough, firm, challenging. He points to each and every one of us and says, you need to clean up your act because there's gold in you. There's silver in you. There's precious value in who you are and what you are about. And the invitation to stand with God demands that you clean yourself up and get right in your body, your heart, and your mind. You see, Malachi, the word Malachi, comes from messenger. And Malachi did not speak on behalf of the temple or the synagogue. No, he went into the streets of the people who had already been oppressed, devastated from the exodus, and said to them, God wants to be back with you. God wants to have a relationship with you. And that relationship is bound and bound in peace. He said, you need to examine your life as you prepare for God's return. And 
Ask yourself deeply, am I ready? Am I cleaned out? Am I prepared? You see, Malachi recognizes the same thing that John the Baptist will say at the River Jordan. That in your heart, there is beauty and grandeur. You are selected, absolutely appointed, to be royal members of God's family. And when you can look into the mirror and see that, and I pray that you do, you recognize the long-term wisdom of not stepping on Superman's cane. But you also see the long-term wisdom that the moment that we're in right now, the suffering, the difficulty, it will pass. There is wisdom that comes from moms and dads. Wisdom like this. I know things look like bad now. But if we sleep on it, we get through this night, tomorrow morning, things will seem better. There is that sense that when we don't have to be trapped in all the struggle and the turmoil, when we can see the bigger, greater picture, when we can, as he is described, allow our hearts to be afire with this Christmas experience, we can say yes to a peace that will not drag us down into the, the no of difficulty and challenge and heartache. It's a long-term peace that says to us, I am beautiful, I am worthy, I am silver, and maybe there's some dust and some dirt and there's some grime on this, but by goodness, God says to me and just says to you that it can be cleaned off when we turn our lives and our hopes onto peace. Getting back to John, who had been silenced for 10 or so months, we hear somebody who finally can speak. I'm sorry, Zachariah, uh, John's dad. So Zachariah, the moment that he writes that his son's name will be John, is able to speak. And he doesn't turn around and say, don't make me come back there. Or like the... Um, the, uh, the thing that's on the back of the car, don't make me come down there. Because you know what? Christ has already come down here. God has come into our lives and loved us, not punished us. Nourished and nurtured us and not turned God's back upon us. It said to you and I that the peace that is so desperately desired, earnestly wanted, is here. In this relationship between you and I. And so an excited Zechariah turns to everybody and says, my son will show us the way. He recognizes that his son is not the Messiah. And that's hard because a lot of parents think their kid's the Messiah. There's an old saying in education when a parent shows up and they want to move their kid from one classroom to the, to the other. And we used to always say this, your kid's taking your kid with them when they go. It was another one that said that uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of parents are going to be questioning how their youth have been behaving in class when their parents have to handle that same experience. That is the long-term wisdom of seeing over and over again what the opportunity that Zechariah Zachari sees in his son John. He sees someone that is going to transform the world and prepare it for the coming of Christ. And so you got to ask, what in good gravy does this have to do with you and for me? Number one, it gives us the relief of knowing we ain't the Messiah. Thank goodness I'm not God. It looks like a too hard job for me. But it also says that we have a place to embark in this relationship that we can find our Jordan Rivers we can go out to where people are thirsty. We can go out to where people like John did are traveling and say, you, you there, I know that your heart is struggling. I know that you're feeling a difficult experience. I know that things are not going as planned. Let me refresh you and renew you in this baptismal water. Let me invite you to wash away all the stuff that's been holding you down 
and allow you to experience deeply and earnestly a new life and a new hope so that when you see Christ, you're ready. You smile. And you know, this, this is for me. There was this psychiatrist who used to believe that there was always someone to blame. He thought everything was associated with our parents. And he would say, you know what? If it's not one thing, it's your mother. Christ says, that the Bible tells us that John is saying it's time to let that all go. To earnestly stop allowing other people to say that, you know, you're a victim. And move and transform into this utterly new and powerful experience. We have that choice every single day in small ways and in big. That reminds me so much of how often People are afraid, me too, of the giant roller coasters at these really big um, amusement parks. I would never go on that. It's too high, it's too big, it's too vast. But the wisdom of a friend was this. Really? You'd rather go on those little ones that you see at the local fair? Those things get taken apart every week. You're not thinking a bolt's missing eventually? Christ calls us through the gospel readings, through our lives, to go big on peace. Stay off the smaller ones, those tilt to worlds and all that jazz. There might be a bolt missing. Go big for earnest love. Go big for earnest peace. Go big for earnest Christmas this year. That, that's the transformative power. And that, that is the message of Malachi. You are ready. The gold and the silver and the power that's inside of you is desperately ready to be unleashed. Go in peace in the world today and always. Amen. I invite you this time as you're able. To please rise and join us in our next hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. It's number 196 in your hymnal.
each Sunday when we come together, we um, pause and reflect um, and pray about celebrations and concerns. So um, let me get my oh, no yellow sheets. Man, where would I be now? So um, from our congregation, what are our um, our celebrations and concerns this day? Celebrations, Pastor. Arlene has been uh, dismissed from the hospital. She's she'll be home. She's in rehab right now, but she'll be home for the end of the week. Fantastic. But she's so, out of the hospital. An absolute celebration for our We we honestly believe it's all your prayers. Absolutely. Absolutely. All the prayers. Amen. We you believe that. You love me. Thank you. And our little. Uh, Amy. Uh, the death of my father in law, Ernie Koch. Yes, I'm so sorry of uh, the passing of Ernie uh, today. We pray for his soul and we pray for your family. My grandson, Nolan. Has been, having, has been having trouble in school. The good news is that yesterday, uh, Friday, they were going to have him evaluated to see if he's ADD. Can we pray for Don as he goes through his challenges in school? Yes, absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, Clark Arlene. Passing of Rogers. Passing of Rogers. Rogers? No, Roger. Roger? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Jim? For Sue and Len. Sue and Lynn? Len. Oh, Len. Loving God, we come to you in prayer. 
It is not something that we do alone. Instead, it is a rich and earnest conversation of our hearts and our lives. We bring forth to you, loving God, our concerns, our fears, our anxieties, our pains, our sufferings, our joys, our celebrations, our triumphants, our hope. This day, in the midst of this balance, this is where we know that the experience of Christ, fully human, fully divine, unfolds richly in who we are and what we are about. It is in that experience that we know trust, and we know peace, ask for an understanding that only you have. Today we raise up these prayer concerns, hold them to you, God, and we hold them to one another. We begin with the sadness and the passing of Ernie. We ask for blessings on Nolan and his family. We hold up Arlene. We also hold up the soul and family of Roger. Well, we have hold up Sue and Len. We hold up for Marlene as she struggles with her health issues. We ask for connection, resurrection, renewal for Emily and her family issues. We ask for strength and courage for our caregivers. We ask for a pause, for an awareness that all people recognize not just their goodness, but the goodness of others, so they may recognize that peace begins within, within their home, their families, their communities, so that this world will know peace. Today we celebrate the release of Arlene from the hospital. The soon-to-be weddings of Helen and Matt and James and Amy. The celebrations and the great joys associated with Corey and Linda and their, their foster parents. The excitement and the anticipation of uh, Louis V and Michael III. And the abundance of grace and gratitude and generosity found in the giving that an entire boat was filled with toys for children that people do not know. But they know the peace. They know that they see the gold in the eyes of children in need. Loving God, we put all these before you with humility, knowing that you answer our prayers. And with that, we say thanks. And so we join our minds, our hearts, and our voices, saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of there's anyone who thinks that they need the um, community cross, um, they're up here and they are also available. I just want to see me and reach out. Each Sunday we pause uh, for a time of tithes and offerings uh, to give back what God has so abundantly given to us so that we may continue to be in uh, mission and ministry locally and globally. I ask you at this time uh, to allow our ushers to wait.
Would you please remain standing for the offering prayer? In response to your great love for us, gracious God, we joyfully and gratefully offer the fruits of our labor and our lives in these gifts. Bless and multiply them, we pray, that the transformative power of your love will be a reality in our neighbors and community. Amen. Would you please join me as you're able in our next hymn, Soon and Very Soon, is number 706 in your hymn. Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Turning now to page 13, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give our thanks to it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name, enjoying their unending hymn.
holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, who gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which you gave yourself up for us, you took bread. You gave thanks. You broke it. You gave it to your disciples, and you said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you come together in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, you took the cup, the cup of salvation. You gave thanks. You gave it to your disciples and said, Take, drink, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you come together in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in this heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Just go around and back out that way.
Let us pray. God of peace and God of miracles. The God that fills lamps so that we may be lit for days. The God who puts light in human form so that we may be illuminated forever. I ask your blessing on us here to humbly accept the peace that you have given each and every one of us to go forth and share that peace in the world. To know with the expressions of who we are and what we are about that our wisdom connects with the good news of Jesus Christ to transform the world and to bring the kingdom of heaven near in our hearts and lives and our minds. This day, be assured that God loves you and so do I. And go in peace.